Okay, today we're going to take a look at the new next image component. I'm going to show you how it actually works. We're going to take a look at all of its props. I'm going to explain each and every one of them. And at the end, I'm also going to show you an example of how you can use it with remotely hosted images, like the ones on your CMS, for example. So let's just get right into their blog post. They have announced Next.js 10 and along with it, this new Next image component. So if we scroll down here, we will see that images take up 50% of the total bytes on web pages. So there's a lot of potential for optimization there. And a bit further down, it also says that images often don't have a width and a height, height property, which is causing them to jump around when the page is loaded. Also, 99.7% of images on websites do not use modern formats like WebP. WebP is a format developed by Google and it's on average about 30% smaller than JPEGs, I think. Okay, let's see this in action. I've set up this little example application. It's just rendering an H1 and an image tag. And if we take a look at it, it just looks like this. I picked this little image of a laptop here. And now we are going to use the new image component. So first thing we're going to do is import image from next image and then we can use it down here. The source attribute is identical to the one above. Nothing changes there. That's pretty cool. We still need an alt tag. And we also need to provide a width and a height property. So this image is 6,000 pixels wide and it has a height of 4,000 pixels, I think. And based on these values, Next.js automatically creates CSS that makes this responsive and you know keeps the right aspect ratio. So if we save this and we're gonna go back to Chrome, we will see that there's now, well, two images. This one, the one above is the original and this one is the optimized one. And I guess I can see some compression artifacts here on the side, but you know, that's to be expected. Also this image, let me just filter by images here in the network tab. So yeah, the original one is a JPEG, which is 1.1 megabytes in size. And the new WebP image is, well, just 12.3 kilobytes. Well, that's pretty nice. But let's go back to the elements tab here. And um, this is the original image. And Next.js actually wraps the image tag for its compressed image into divs. We can see they have some style attributes, some CSS to make them responsive. This padding bottom here is a little, well, it's not a hack. It's how you can actually make, how you can actually keep a div at a certain aspect ratio. And then they've got the image tag in here, which uses um, a source set attribute down here to provide URLs for different image sizes. And then your browser can decide which one it should pick. So if you go back to the network tab, let's just make this a bit smaller to like simulate a phone, refresh the page. So now it loaded the image that's 420 pixels wide. And now if we change the viewport size, it loads bigger images, you see. There's the 1024 and there's the 1200 pixel, right? And of course they get larger in, in size because they also contain more pixels, obviously. Okay, so now let's look at the API reference for next image. If we scroll down here, we get a list of all the props that it, that it accepts. Source is obviously the well path or URL to the source image. We've used this already. We've also used width and height. Now sizes is a bit more difficult as, well, if you go to Mozilla's docs here, it says that it's a list of a media condition and a source size value. So basically you can use these media conditions that you know from your responsive CSS to propose image widths depending on the viewport. So in their example here, they use max height 500 pixels, 1000 pixels, 
which proposes to use a source of 1000 pixels width if the viewport is not higher than 500 pixels. This is not really necessary to use as your browser is already doing a good job of this yourself, but just know that you can actually override this behavior if you are not satisfied with it. Your browser usually takes into consideration the viewport width and also your device pixel ratio. Now next is the quality of the optimized image, which is an integer between one and a hundred. It defaults to 75, which you can see here in the, in the network tab. So Q equals 75 in this query parameter thing on the image URL is actually the quality, which you can totally overwrite. So let's just go in here and say quality equals 10. Now, if you refresh the page, you will see a very pixelated version of the image, which is, of course, even smaller. This one is just five kilobytes. And if you use something like 95, it looks very close to the original image, but it also went up from five to almost 40 kilobytes. Okay, next is the loading prop, which is the loading behavior. It it defaults to lazy, which means that it will the image will not be loaded until it's coming close to being scrolled into viewport. So if you've got, for example, a very long blog post, then the images at the bottom are not being loaded at the beginning. They're only being loaded once they are almost being scrolled into viewport. So that's pretty cool. And it's also defaulting to lazy. So you don't need, really need to do anything there in most cases, of course. Then priority, when true, the image will be considered high priority and preload. We can, I can show you what this means. So let's just say um, priority. And if we go back to Chrome, hit the elements tab, we can see that in the head, it adds a new link tag, link rel preload. And basically as soon as the browser encounters this, link tag, it will start to load this image. If you go into the network tab, we will see that the image has been loaded first and then there's the bigger image. So let's just change to a slower network speed and hit load. And you will see that this image is being loaded first before this one because, well, it has priority. Next is the unoptimized prop. So this is really simple. If you set this prop, then the source image will be served as is instead of resizing and changing quality. So if you really need to use the original one for some reason, you can just set this. And unsized is not really recommended, but if you set unsized, then you do not need to uh, use the width and height attributes. They should not be used with above default images which means images like uh, this one. So the fold is basically where the first page ends. So here it's about on the title. So everything above here is considered above the fold. And yeah, that wraps it up. That's all the attributes. Okay, now let's take a look at how you can configure this component. In your next config.js file, you can set device sizes, which correspond to the width values that we have seen here in the browser. So 768 is coming from here. And the next one should be 1024. And if we resize the viewport here, we can confirm that this is actually true. Now, another good thing to know here is that if you open this in a new tab and you just change the query parameter to, let's say, 1025, you'll get that this width is not allowed, which is because it is not specified in here. So if we were to go in here and add 1025 and then just um, restart our application, 1025 actually works. Next up is the image sizes. This one is for images that are not meant to be responsive. So most likely you're gonna use this for icons. And the way you use this is you will define them here and then you can use width 16 as a width um, prop here. 
And now Next.js knows because 16 is listed in here that this image is not meant to be responsive. So it will always render it at 16 pixels width. But of course, letting the browser decide if he wants to choose, let's say the 32 pixel image because its device pixel ratio is two. Now, next up, we got domains. This is for when you actually want to optimize images coming from an external source. I told you at the beginning we're gonna we're gonna um, take a look at an example, and we're gonna do this right now. So I've prepared this image here from Unsplash. Now this means that we need to whitelist this URL. So we're gonna put this in here because otherwise it will not work. Images.unsplash.com. And then we can copy the link and just put it into the source tag right there. And we also need to get width and height correctly. So what did I say? 4,000 and 2,000. 4,000 width, 2,000 height. And now if we, we get that it it's um, not configured under images in your next config.js, which is because I have not restarted it here. My bad. And now it works. So now it has loaded the image from here, which is, well, pretty large. And it has compressed it down to 48 kilobytes and also converted it to WebP. So it totally works with externally hosted images. Pretty cool. Next up, we got the path property, which is a prefix to the URL. So if we just take a look in here, we will see that the source actually says slash underline next slash image, which is exactly this path, which also happens to be the default value. And this works in conjunction with the loader. And a loader allows you to use different cloud image providers. So instead of using the built-in one, you can use an external one, like any of these three uh, are supported currently. And this path property is then, you know, the prefix to this URL. Okay, so that wraps up this video. Thank you for watching till the end. And if you learned something new, please like the video and consider subscribing to my channel. Thanks for stopping by.